the Thoughty OT podcast. The educational system was awful for me growing up, and secondary school, what we call middle school over here, was it's always a hard time for everybody, mm-hmm. whether you have a disability or not. But when you are autistic, it's really hard. But I feel like my experience, I feel like I was manipulated and my parents yeah. were as well. It, we had a very hard time trying to get me into a good middle school that would help me with autism. So my mom, it, it's a little hard to talk about, but I'm ready to. Uh, she found sure. me that she stumbled upon this weird Christian middle school, and they said that they were going to help people with autism and other Mm -hmm. disabilities. And they had a great track record for that. But what they didn't tell my parents is that they were actively trying to fix people like us, trying to make us normal. And we, and we were constantly being abused under this horrible system of oppression And I was abused by this school for three years until my mom. I'm so sorry to hear that. Until my mom got me out and I went to a public school. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's really tough. I mean, I I know from you know talking to other autistic people, you know, there's a there's a lot of like therapies and stuff which are quite sort of commonplace within like a scientific or teaching or parenting communities. Um, and a lot of these practices can be quite, as you said, they, they try and push you into a box and stop you from doing all your artistic things. And um, a lot of people say that it can be quite sort of traumatic for them during those times. Yeah, I feel like the school system, especially the the ones that are really private, they try to sell you this idea that, oh, we're going to help your autistic child, we're going to save them, but we're the ones that are going to be abused the most. We're always Mm. looked on as an outsider, even though we we go into survival mode we try to fit in for all those years that we're bullied and it has a big effect on us i remember when i was in that school i was constantly shamed i was called names i was locked in bathrooms oh it my was God. by the teachers well by well there was i'll get to that later later <laughs> but I mean, by the students, but I did. There was actually an incident where we had a principal, but then we got a new principal. And Mm -hmm. everyone was kind of like, oh, what's this guy going to do? He's, But nobody questioned it. But he was kind of a fire and brimstone kind of guy. And I knew he hated my guts just because he... He knew I was different, but there was, I went up to, he was just randomly looking out at the window one day and I just asked, what what is he doing? And he just touched me. Right. What what do you mean? What do you mean in that, in that sense? Is that inappropriate touching or? Like inappropriate touching. He always oh had gosh. this weird kind of thing about me because there's just, I don't know if autistic people are weird or mentioned in the Bible and were bad, but there was the final straw when he called me a devil child, Satan's daughter, even though he, well, he wanted some of this. I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> But my mom was vivid. Like she was just at the gas imagine. station. Oh, he Jesus. literally called my mom and just to tell her that I was being disobedient and that I was a devil child. And that's when we had to leave. 
Yeah. But everyone said that this school was heaven, but it was my hell. And this is one of the things I always talk about in my speeches about autism is to really be careful about where you send your kids to school. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. even if you're autistic or not, middle school is going to be the hardest time for anyone. And we just want to be we want to love ourselves. We want to embrace ourselves, especially if we're autistic, because we're always told to hide ourselves no matter what. And I don't really like that. But the good thing is that I started my platform, Ability Beyond Disabilities, while in middle school. And I say this all the time in pageants, that when I was being bullied, I started my platform by writing positive notes on my bully's lockers. And one of the teachers saw me and she's like, are you writing all these notes? And I just thought, uh, uh, uh. Uh, but she liked them and she told me to keep on going. Hey up YouTube, hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far. If you want to check out the full episode, you can find it here on my YouTube channel under the podcast section, or you can go to Spotify, Apple, Google to check it out on different podcasting streaming services. If you have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to like, perhaps drop me a subscribe if you want to see some more content from me and drop a comment down below even if it's something simple like an emoji or a, or a heart. Uh, it really does help satisfy those big YouTube algorithm gods in the sky. Anyway, I'll let you go back to it. And I've been going strong for years and it's a platform for my pageant now. So yeah, I just want to encourage people that are like me that we're not alone and we can mm. do anything we set our mind to or no matter what we've been through we're awesome i really appreciate you um sort of open opening up about your ex your experiences with that principle because i i can't imagine that you know that's a, a very e easy thing to do and you know i think it's from looking at sort of like, like the statistics particularly for um, autistic women, but you know, I, I'm sh I'm sure other other autistic people have experienced this. But manipulation tends to be a lot more effective on us, especially like it tends to be more effective on people when they're younger. But um, if they're if they're autistic as well, because we we t we tend to sort of communicate and um, trust what people say because we like to communicate directly to people. And so we, we we have a lot of emphasis on people's words and what they say to us, um, and that sometimes can be, you know, abused quite a lot because we we don't pick up on the the different signs that someone's putting across, like the indirect communication that something might be a bit off or they might be lying. Um, and I know that that also as well there is you know some statistics around. Um, you know, around sort of sexual abuse with, with, with women as well, um, which is, you know, it was quite quite hard for me to read. Um, but basically what I'm saying is I, I appreciate you opening up about something that's, you know, so um, must be must be very sort of raw and hard. Um, well, thank you so much. I really like opening up about it too. And and it's really true. Statistics say that women with autism and girls too, especially, we are more likely to get kidnapped. We're more likely to mm. get raped. And it's because autistic people in general were very trusting. I don't know yeah. why that is, but I know I was very trusting in my most vulnerable state because I, I feel like I was in survival mode deep down mm -hmm. when I was 13. I wanted to be accepted. And yes, yeah. it's hard when you're autistic as well. You just want to be accepted and you mm -hmm. know something is, I don't want to say not all that right, but a lot of kids, 
they might think, what's wrong with me? Why am I not like the others? And I feel ashamed saying that because I always say, love yourself. And I mm-hmm. do love myself. I, w- I love myself above all else. But at 13, you might not feel that way. And I'm just yeah. being real. We need to change that. Definitely. I, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, for, for for a lot of my life, I've always, you know, had some really difficult um, issues with like my own self-esteem and confidence. I think it's, it's really hard when you see um, other people getting on and making friends and being a part of groups. Um, and then when it, when it comes to you, cause you're a bit different in the way that you communicate and you think and sort of perceive things, they kind of label you as this alien weird yes. creature definitely sort of, yes. for no reason. oh my god like i know i was talking about that i would i would just be at my locker and then people just randomly come up to me and they'd always ask why do you look so sad and i'm just like <laughs> what what i didn't think so i'm very happy today yes yeah. but, and now when i'm 26 or even years back when I had jobs in Florida, everyone would ask me, are you high? Because I, ha- <laughs> I have the slow voice and I'm just like, no, I'm tired, but I'm not high. So <laughs> you, you really can't win with people who are not autistic. 